Hi guys, uh, welcome to the online online session. We are going to uh, discuss today four slides from bone pathology. So starting with 190, this is uh, renal osteodystrophy, followed by 191, purulent osteomyelitis, slide 41, Paget's disease, and the last would be slide 17 that is osteochondroma okay so let's start with uh, slide 190 this is a renal osteodystrophy so this is uh, seen in the setting of uh, chronic renal disease there's a chronic renal failure and what we're looking at would be the skeletal changes so um, in chronic renal failure it presents with secondary hyperparathyroidism which causes the manifestations, the skeletal changes in the patient. So they can present with osteoporosis or osteopenia, osteomyelite, uh, osteomalacia, and growth retardation. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, we would identify the presence of uh, lamellar bone and some portions which are woven bone okay so this would be the woven okay and this would be the lamellar bone so the lamellar bone is the one that is organized the one that is not organized this would be the woven bone okay so if you're going to look at the scanning view for this you can see that some of the bone trabeculae would be thinned out so this would be one of the manifestations of osteoporosis or osteopenia. There would be thinning of the bony trabeculae and that's the reason why these patients may be prone to, to fractures. And then if you're going to look at other areas of the slide, you can see the presence of the bone marrow. Okay. So you have mixture of the uh, red and the yellow. Okay. This one would be the red, this would be the yellow. Closer look, very important. Okay, uh, you can see the presence of majority of them would be mononuclear. Okay, it means that they would be derived from the erythroid and myeloid elements. Okay, so this would be the bone marrow. So just okay, uh, just go around or move around the rest of the slides so that you get acquainted so you have a lot of bone marrow portions here you have some thin out trabeculae uh, with a lot of uh, fibrotic areas okay. okay so you can see fibrotic areas and that is one of the uh, one of the manifestations of renal osteodystrophy when we have secondary hyperparathyroidism, uh, we can see the presence of oschitis fibrosa cystica. Okay, it means that there's a presence of osteoclastic activity, uh, the presence of, uh, let's try to see the osteoclastic activity. Okay, so here you have a lot of large cells, multinucleated, these are all osteoclasts. Here you have osteoclasts in the area, so there is uh, aggressive, okay, the aggressive osteoclastic activity. Some of the bones would contain osteoblastic creaming, okay, and then you have here the areas of fibrosis, okay, here you have areas of fibrosis, and this would be part of oschitis fibrosa uh, cystica. This can be a form of uh, dissecting oschitis, okay? So you can see that it, it's, uh, it's trying to remove portions of uh, this bone, okay? Uh, let's go to the other areas. Let's try to, let's try to see this one. Okay, so here you would see a lot of osteoclastic activity. There, you see? Okay, 
So you have a lot of uh, uh, osteoclasts. These are osteoclasts. You have some blood vessels. Okay, here's another one. Okay, these are the resorption pits. Uh, and then you have the presence of uh, osteoclast. I think this would be a granulation tissue formation. Okay, so this would be uh, renal osteodystrophy. Okay, so next we have slide uh, 191. This is purulent osteomyelitis. So I, I showed to you one area that uh, in the in renal osteo osteodystrophy that shows the presence of um, of uh, white blood cells. Okay, so this particular slide shows to you uh, some of the bony trabeculae that are thicker uh, or normal looking, okay, as compared to the previous slide. Okay, so they are thicker than the previous slide, which would mean that these are the normal trabeculae. Okay, however, you look at the uh, inflammatory cells present. Okay, this is the most important uh, area of this line. Okay, so what do we see? The presence of segmenters, okay, histocytes. So these are segmenters and histocytes. These are segmenters. Okay, some are histocytes. So this is purulent osteomyelitis. So how does the infectious agent, okay, go to this area? Because it's not usually present in this particular, those uh, bacteria are not usually present in the soft tissue or in the bone area. Uh, it can be hematogenous spreading. It can be through extension from the contiguous sites or a direct implantation. So it can be uh, a complication of the surgical procedures performed, the presence of an open fractures, um, and it can also be uh, part of diabetes infection. So the most common culprit for this particular uh, infection would be the Staphylococcus aureus. And this is seen in 80 to 90 percent of positive cultures okay however uh, in osteomyelitis we would only encounter 50 percent to be positive in cultures the rest would be negative okay so uh, we do not see dead bone area here we do not see the dead bone portion which we would call as the sequestrum okay so and if you're going to uh, look, okay, one week after the presence of osteomyelitis with uh, the presence of the sequestrum, it will show the presence of new bone formation, which we would call as involucrum. Okay, so next slide we have slide uh, 41. So this is Paget's disease. Okay, so Paget's disease is a disease which would be associated with an increase in the amount of bone mass, but it is disordered. Uh, so there would be the presence of disorganization. And this is also called osteitis deformans. So this is seen in older individuals that's 40 years old, 70 years old. Uh, and there are three phases to this particular uh, condition. So the first phase would be the initial osteolytic phase. Okay? And then uh, osteo when you say osteolytic, it means that there's resorption. So it means that there's a lot of osteoclastic activity. And then followed by a mixed osteoblastic and uh, osteoclastic uh, activity. And then the third one would be the presence of osteosclerosis, osteosclerotic stage. And in osteosclerotic stage, it is identified with the presence of the mosaic pattern. 
okay? And we see it in the lamellar bone wherein you have the jigsaw puzzle. So, uh, genetic factors may play a part in this particular condition. And uh, number one would be the SQSTM1 uh, mutation found in 50% of familial cases seen only in 5 to 10% of sporadic cases. And when you have SQSTM1 mutation, it's associated with NF-kappa B activity. It means that there would be an increase in osteoclastic activity. The other mutations would be for RANK as well as the inactivation of the osteoprotegerin. And another, um, another factor here would be viral infections. So chronic viral infections that would affect or infect the osteoclasts can increase interleukin-6. And uh, uh, example of the viruses that can cause this one would be the measles and other RNA virus. Not sure if coronavirus would be, be part of it but because it's an RNA virus. Okay, so let's try to look over the slide. So what is very prominent in this particular case would be the erratic, haphazard, irregular formation of thick bony trabeculae. Okay, notice that there's irregular formation of thick bony trabeculae. Okay, irregular formation of thick bony trabeculae there. And then in this particular portion, this would be the uh, woven bone. Okay, so this is a woven bone here. You have the woven bone. This would be the lamellar bone. Okay. So what about the what they what they uh, identified with osteosclerotic phase, and that is the mosaic pattern. So when you have mosaic pattern, you have irregular uh, formations, haphazard arrangement. And you can clearly see that uh, there would be the cement lines, okay, that would be uh, irregularly formed. So this would be the mosaic pattern, okay? This area is the mosaic pattern. So you can see the changes in the color, okay? Some would show an, uh, a thicker portion of the, uh, of the osteoid matrix, okay? This is another area of the uh, of the mosaic pattern. Notice the cement lines, okay, that would uh, separate the different haversion systems, okay. So this would be the mosaic pattern, which is part of osteosclerotic phase. Although, if you're going to look at the other areas in the slide. There is still the presence of um, the mixed phase, okay, like in this portion. So you can still see the presence of uh, osteoclasts here, osteoclasts with osteoblasts. So this would be the mixed phase in this portion. Okay, here's another one, osteoclast, and then you have some osteoblasts in the area here. Osteoclasts, and uh, this one's still osteoclast, and then you have the osteoblasts in the area. Here you have some large osteoblasts, osteoclasts, osteoclasts. Okay, and then areas of fibrosis. So again, this is... Um, this is Paget's disease. So again, very easy to differentiate. They have irregularly formed lamellar bone, okay, and then you have the presence of this mosaic pattern, okay, there, okay. So you have the mosaic pattern over this portion. Take note, mosaic pattern would be seen in the lamellar bone, okay, here. Another one, this portion. That's the mosaic pattern. Okay? So, our last slide would be osteochondroma. So, uh, this one would be for the bone tumor. So, 
um, this is slide 17 and this is also called as exostosis um, this particular bone tumor is capped by cartilage so it's uh, the outer layer would be hyaline and then inner portion would be bone uh, would be osteoid okay so it's the most common benign tumor observed 85 percent would be solitary 15 percent would be familial and it's associated with loss of function of the ext1 and 2 so it's autosomal dominant and usually it would arise from the metaphysis of uh, uh, of bones that would undergo endochondrial ossification so what are examples of them we have the knee okay you can also see them in the in the pelvis in the scapula or even in the ribs so those are areas that would show endochondrial ossification um, grossly this appears to be pedunculated polypoid and first of all we have to identify for the okay for the edge so this is the edge yeah this particular slide is not so clear it is a poor stain but you can see here the edge okay of the osteochondroma it's pedunculated this one would be the perichondrium and then how do you know that this is the this would be the uh, cartilage okay here you would see the presence of the chondrocytes having a myxoid stroma okay these are the chondrocytes myxoid stroma so right now you have to differentiate you you have to distinguish what is uh, bone and what is uh, cartilage this one would be cartilage so once you would see the presence of the uh, eosinophilic character okay this one would already be the bone uh, this would be the osteoid so this one would be the uh, osseous portion and then you also have the bone marrow area so again osteochondroma would be composed of bone and cartilage okay so those are the slides that we have for this session so kindly stay safe and good night